Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm so glad that you have decided to join us today for worship. This is an opportunity for us to gather on a virtual platform to continue to praise God and to give God thanks for all that God has provided for us. As we continue into this new year, I want to remind you that we do this service every week. And in addition, we are doing outdoor in-person worship. Those services from Jan will begin on January the 24th at three o'clock. We are changing the time to make it a little bit warmer for you. Three o'clock on January the 24th. And then again, we'll meet on February the 7th for Holy Communion. And then on February the 21st, at three o'clock. I hope you'll plan to join us virtually and in person. I do wanna say a word of appreciation to all of you who have contributed to the ministries of our congregation this year. Because of your generosity, we were able to pay our apportionments 100% this year, which is an achievement any year, but especially in this year. And it's because of you, and I do thank you for every means of support you have offered this congregation through this year. As we continue to worship together, I'm thankful to report that our soup cellar is open for business and that we are serving our community again in the same ways that we were before our uh, closure last week. I want to ask you to continue to be in prayer for many of our church families who have experienced sickness, and grief and to be a part of our prayers for our community. On Tuesday night at six o'clock, we will have a Zoom prayer service as we pray for our nation before the inauguration on January the 20th. On January the 24th, we will kick off our stewardship campaign. Heidi Conti is our stewardship chairperson for this year and we are naming our campaign Committed. We look forward to working with Heidi and with each one of you as we make plans for a great year here at Washington Street United Methodist Church. Let us worship the Lord. Please join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. You invite us, O oh God, to live in your ways, and you give us to each other to know and to love as we journey in this life. Show us your will for all creation. Help us to listen to your urgings with prayerful hearts so that we may honor what you have made in the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen.
It's Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every matter under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, you have the power to heal, not only individuals, but also nations. Please come and heal our nation. Heal us from our worship of country, political party, and people instead of you. Heal us from our need to minimize and marginalize others because of their skin color, gender, sexual orientation, nationality, political party, or place of birth, instead of treating them as your beloved children. Heal us from COVID-19, cancer, heart disease, and so many other things that cut short the lives of our friends and neighbors. Heal us from our financial distress and our strained relationships. Help us to cling to you in these uncertain times and give us the ability to trust you in this and all things. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther. He saw James, son of Je Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So ends this reading of God's holy word.
Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. I'm not talking about the app that has received mixed reviews in social media of late. I'm talking about time. Time and timing are important elements in our gospel lesson this morning. Its pervasive presence encouraged me to go back and read our good friend Coleth's words in Ecclesiastes 3 and to do a little research on some famous quotes about time. Here are the top ten. The two most powerful warriors are patience and time. Leo Tolstoy in War and Peace. Time is money. Benjamin Franklin. Time waits for no one. Folklore from 1225. Better three hours too soon than a minute too late. William Shakespeare. Lost time is never found again. Benjamin Franklin. Time is the most valuable thing an individual can spend. Theophrastus. Time is the wisest counselor of all. Pericles. The key is in not spending time, but in investing it. Stephen R. Covey. It is the time you have wasted for your rose that makes your rose so important. The author of The Little Prince. Punctuality is the thief of time. Oscar Wilde, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Certainly Jesus would agree with many of these quotes, but especially with the folklore from 1225. Time waits for no one. He launched his ministry after learning that John the Baptist had been arrested because he realized Herod's action propelled his message to a new level of urgency. He could not wait or delay this mission that God had sent him to fulfill. He boldly announced, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. This urgency weaves itself throughout the gospel of Mark. We find it here in our lesson today as we listen to Jesus' words with Andrew and Peter and James and John. When Jesus calls Simon and Andrew, they immediately leave their nets and follow him. And when Jesus saw James and John, he did not hesitate. He immediately called them to follow him. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. As I pondered time and discipleship, I thought about the compelling message of Jesus and how it seems that we 21st century Christ followers have lost that sense of urgency. Perhaps we have resided so long in this season of the second advent this time of waiting between the dawn of the reign of God and the fulfillment of that which is yet to be, that we have fallen into that state where your eyes are open, but you're really not seeing, nor are you functioning at 100%. Sort of like sleepwalking. I wondered if we have become like those ten foolish maidens in a parable that Jesus told who took their lamps out to wait for the bridegroom, but they did not take any oil. When the bridegroom arrived, they were not there ready and waiting. They had gone away to search for oil. Tick tock. Tick tock, tick tock. Time waits for no one. Such wisdom from the 12th century. 
Over the years, I've learned a few things about time. I've learned some people have no respect for time or punctuality. But I've also learned that one should never delay a response to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Never delay. I've learned that no one should ever delay doing kindness for another. I'm sure you've learned some of those lessons too. What our lesson today teaches us is that we should never delay in making the business of Jesus our business. That is what Simon and Andrew did when Jesus called them at the Sea of Galilee. They left behind their lucrative fishing business and they made the business of Jesus their business. He was on a mission from God to take the good news to everyone. And Simon and Andrew immediately got out of their boats. They left their nets and they followed him. They followed him as he went to teach in the synagogues, as he went to the hillsides, as he healed the sick, as he cast out demons, as he welcomed women and children to places of honor within his community. They made the business of Jesus their business. And when Jesus saw James and John, he showed us that we should never delay in inviting everyone we meet to be a part of the family of Jesus. He immediately called James and John to follow him. And like Simon and Andrew, James and John left their family business, their father, perhaps even their inheritance to follow Jesus. They did not hesitate to make the family of Jesus their family. So what is Jesus calling you to make your business today? Who does Jesus want you to invite into the family of God? Tick talk, tick tock, tick tock. Today we stand between the assault on the capital of our nation and the inauguration of our next president. It's a poignant time. Some have suggested that this is a wake-up call for America, like 911 when we as a nation were startled from our ignorance of international terrorism and awakened to threats that we had failed to acknowledge. However, you have experienced this unfortunate time in American history. Wake up now to the presence of Christ and ask yourself, what is Jesus calling me to do today in this time? It is definitely not a time to delay. It is a time for us to make the business of Jesus our business. One of his principal means of communicating the message of the nearness of God was through his teaching. That's why we have such an amazing body of material that is a collection of his parables, his sayings, stories about Jesus and his healing, stories about his birth, stories about his death and resurrection. One of our members recently was leading a devotion and remarked that one of her very favorite passages in the gospel is from the Beatitudes. She said that she read that Gandhi also read from the Beatitudes every day of his life. 
Now, we're very familiar with the Beatitudes and the blessings that are associated with them. But Luke adds this as well. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. And this time, perhaps we as followers of Jesus are compelled to teach the Beatitudes over and over again. We are compelled to love even those who would name us their enemy, even those we would name the enemy of our nation or of our state. You cannot love God and fail to love your neighbor. You just can't. We need to teach the truths of Jesus. He compels us to do good even to those who hate us, who curse us, or who abuse us. However, the language of love does not mean that we do not need to do the hard work of healing. Jesus was a wonderful teacher, verbally challenging the ways that culture and religion collaborated to marginalize the poor, the sick, and those who did not have the privilege of being born a wealthy male in Palestinian Judaism. He also engaged in the up-close and personal work of healing. He made a mud pack and applied it to the eyes of a blind man. He healed a leper. He went into the synagogue and healed men and women and claimed them as sons and daughters of God when those around them would only name them unclean. Jesus got up close and personal. He even asked the unclean spirits, what name do you go by? We can name the unclean spirits of our time. Hate speech, polarization, false accusation. It's what the Ten Commandments call bearing false witness. Violence, disregard for the neighbor, prejudice against people of all colors, genders, orientations, and populations. Such unclean spirits sent a mob into the Capitol building on January 6. Such unclean spirits sent white people in white robes to intimidate, maim, beat, and lynch black people in this country for decades. Such unclean spirits have repressed women for more than a millennium. Such unclean spirits fueled the execution of over six million Jews and people who were massacred because they were wounded, sick, aged, or too young to work. Jesus compels us to engage these unclean spirits up close and personal. What is Jesus calling you to do? Our district will be hosting a panel discussion on truth, accountability, and reconciliation tomorrow at noon. You can join the conversation. You will find the link on our website or on the Columbia District website at Facebook and YouTube. What is Jesus calling you to do? In February, our racial justice action team will be offering to all of our members bias training. You can engage in bias training and learn more about your own bias towards others. Jesus compels us to engage these unclean spirits up close 
and personally. We cannot tolerate hate speech. Ever. Ever. Despite what Chloe says, there is never a time when Christians can chant, hang Mike Pence. Never. Never. When Christians do harm to one another or to their neighbor, it is called sin. Always. Jesus compels us, as John Wesley instructed us, do no harm. These unclean spirits are the evil that our baptismal vows call us to resist. Tick-tock. 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 When Jesus saw James and John, he immediately called them to follow him and to make his family their family. In our time, Jesus compels us to look beyond our own circles of familiarity and to recognize the image of God, the Imago Dei, in the other. God has come into the world to show us what it means to live as citizens of the reign of God, what it means to be part of the family whose kinship is not based on location or genetics or on the chance of birth, but in a common faith in our one God. Tick-tock. 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 Time waits for no one. Better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Lost time is never found again. Time is the most valuable thing an individual can spend. The key is in not spending time, but investing in it. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Jesus compels us to follow him now, to make his business our business, to make the family of Jesus our family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our typical worship experience, an in-person worship, we have a time to respond to the Word of God with our prayers, our offerings, a time for us to reflect on the message and to think about how we will respond to what we have heard. We can't pass the plates today. But I do want you to take a moment and to seriously meditate on the questions I've asked you today. What business is Jesus asking you to make your business? Who is Jesus inviting you to welcome into the family? Let us pray. Holy One, our eyes and our minds are filled with images that are unwelcome. And yet you draw us into that place where we see very clearly the needs of our time. Help us, O oh Lord, 
to understand the business of Jesus in our time and to do those things which he has called us to do. Help us, O Lord, to truly examine our own hearts and to repent, to turn around any part of ourselves that participates in hate speech or harmful behavior towards our neighbors. Help us, O oh God, to see clearly beyond our own needs to the needs of our neighbors, especially to those who are standing now in our time, in our neighborhoods, who need to be invited into the family of Jesus. May we welcome them. May they become a part of your family through faith. And may we all live together in love and hope and in the peace of Christ. Amen. Go into the world to make the business of Jesus your business as we love and serve God and our neighbors in all that we do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.